Welcome to Herself, a space for women to have deep conversations about the intersection between spiritual entrepreneurship and fulfilling your potential, so you can become the woman you truly are in every area of your life. After being in business for over two decades, I've learned, as you likely have too, that as you grow your business, your business grows you in unexpected, often challenging, yet miraculous ways. Here, we'll talk about how to get out of your own way so you can grow a business that's abundant and sustainable while allowing you to be a force for good in the world. I'll give you simple, actionable strategies as well as wisdom and inspiration to help you root into your wholeness, lead from your values, and work in ways that feel deeply aligned so you can bring your true self into the world through your business and in every area of your life. We're experiencing an inflection point in the world right now. The old order is falling, white patriarchal supremacy, and the new order is rising, which is much more woman and human centric. And we see this in so many ways. So I'm part of Gen X. I was born in 1977. And so much is coming forward right now around perimenopause and menopause as women of my generation are going through this, including myself. And We are outraged at how little information and support is available for us. So many books and retreats and online programs are becoming available. And I know that we'll see more and more in the five to 10 years to come as even more women of my generation pass through this particular initiation. So that's one example of this. Another is the battle around abortion here in the U.S. And most notably, the upcoming election also here in the U.S., between a white male who holds to old world order values and a woman of color who hasn't sacrificed her femininity and her joy amidst all of her worldly achievements and her rise to power. So both represent two very different futures, two very different worlds. Those of us souls who are alive right now are part of the transition team to usher in this new world. And transitions, as we all very well know from our personal lives, are often chaotic. They can be challenging, messy, disorienting, confusing. This is the nature of transitions. And what used to apply no longer applies, and the new normal is not yet here. So this is a big part of what can make it so disorienting. Now, a big part of this for us as professional women, as leaders in our industries, in our lives, is really acknowledging that the dominant way of working simply isn't working for us. A way of working that puts productivity ahead of pleasure, that puts profits ahead of our health, that prioritizes transactional relationships, over genuinely reciprocal and nourishing ones, and as a result, creates a way of working that leads us to exhaustion, burnout, and even sickness. But the big question is, what's the alternative? It's hard to clearly see this. And this is why we're having a hard time really stepping into a different way. We lack adequate role models here because very few have figured this out. And I would argue that that's because no single person can figure it out on their own. We need to discover this together. And also our ways of working are intimately woven into our cultures and into what's available for us in terms of resources from our society. So it's all part of this larger fabric and this larger picture. But definitely what needs to happen is to break the spell of working and living in isolation, and coming together to find our new way as women within communities rather than just trying to figure out ourselves. And if we look more closely, what we see happening here does go deeper than politics and healthcare and ways of working. It roots into qualities of the divine that are ready to be infused more overtly into our day-to-day lives. And these qualities of the divine are of the divine feminine. 
all genders, all beings, all of nature hold qualities of both the divine feminine and the divine masculine. These are not gender specific. One of the reasons why I stepped into this work of serving women over 20 years ago was because I felt bereft and angry at the lack of reverence for the divine feminine in our world. And as a result, the lack of resources, the lack of support, the lack of validation that we all experience as women. And one of the things that the women who work with me come seeking is more of a balance between their masculine and feminine modes of living and working. And by masculine and feminine, I mean more masculine is more of a outward focused way of being, more around doing. And the feminine mode is more of an inner focus and is more around being. And since this is an inquiry I've been in now for my entire adult life, and because my own findings on this deepen and shift as I move through different seasons, not only in my womanhood, but also in my business, I wanted to share today some tangible ways that you can be in sync with this larger emergence that's happening on the planet right now. So here are five ways that you can bring more of this divine feminine energy into your business and your work life in general right now. So the first way is to have some images of the Divine Feminine in your workspace. So my workspace is also my practice space, meaning that I do my meditation practice in here, I do my yoga practice, I exercise in here, I read, I write in my journal, I also write, I'm recording this podcast in here, I teach my classes in here. This is my creative space. And I love Virginia Woolf's concept of every woman needs a room of one's own. So this is a space that is just completely immersed in my energy. And I know that not everyone can have a full room to herself. I encourage you, maybe there's just a corner of a room a desk or a table, just a small space that is yours. And since I was very young, Mother Mary has been the embodiment of the Divine Feminine that I have most turned to. I was raised Catholic, and I received a small painting of her as a little girl for my first communion that I kept on my nightstand. And I really felt her presence watching over me throughout my childhood, and I've kept that small painting with me over the years. And it's still on my altar right now. I can see it as I'm speaking these words. So through my travels over the years, I've also started collecting various images of Mary. I've gotten these mostly in Mexico and Santa Fe, although I have some from Turkey, one from Paris, one from Santa Barbara too. And these are hung on the wall next to my desk to the left of me. I call it my Mary wall. So that each time I come into this space, each time that I sit down, at my desk, I remember my ultimate devotion, that I am an emissary of Mary, of the Divine Feminine. And that's the context from which everything else unfolds. So I ask you, is there a representation of the Divine Feminine that most speaks to you and that you could bring into your workspace? Maybe it's Tara or Kuan Yin from Buddhist traditions or Lakshmi from yogic traditions, maybe it's white buffalo woman from Native American Lakota traditions or something else. So the second thing is to bring beauty into your workspace. Now, in addition to my altar and my merry wall, I have a big pillar candle inside a glass hurricane on my desk to my right. And whenever I sit down to work, especially when I sit down to create something like this podcast or to teach a class, to mentor a client, I light this candle. It's a ritual that both reminds me I'm stepping into a sacred space and that brings more beauty into my environment. It's a small thing that for me makes a big difference and I actually feel incomplete if I sit down and I haven't lit a candle. In addition to this, I really strive to make my office space beautiful. So that for me, that means a lot of whites and creams. I have cream-colored walls, white furniture, 
I have a few sheepskin rugs, even one that I that I sit on in my desk chair. I have a white orchid, plants. So the whole space feels really soothing for my nervous system, feels really inviting, and is an expression of one of my core values, which is beauty. And it really acknowledges that beauty isn't trivial. It's actually medicinal. And it's one of the central qualities of the divine feminine. So what is at least one representation or one ritual of beauty that you feel called to bring into your space? Is it a candle, a comfortable blanket, a vase of fresh flowers, or maybe it's something else? The third thing I do to bring more divine feminine energy into my business is that I pray. And I want to preface that prayer is not, I, I, don't, I don't mean prayer in a religious sense, although if that feels what you're called to, I welcome that. But I mean it in a more general sense, as in divine communication, in inner communication, with source, with the big self, with your higher self, or you could say with your own heart. Another way to think of prayer is it's our intuition. It speaks to us quietly. So we need deep listening and stillness in order to hear this. This is one of the reasons why I begin my day with meditation and followed by some journaling. I often ask questions if there's things I need to decide about my life or my work, like how to launch a particular course or specific actions I need to take that day or whether or not to hire someone. And I begin there rather than in the external communications. I know the rest of my day will likely be filled with those. So things go very differently when I start with meditation and prayer, some journaling than they do if I start with email and social media. Immediately when I get on those things, I don't have as close of a connection to that still small voice inside of me. So starting with this deep inner listening keeps me taking steps based on this deeper devotion that I want to be at the heart of everything. And experience has shown me that things always turn out better when I do that. Now, some questions that you can ask either internally or in your journal if you're going to be kind of writing this out on the page is what's needed now? What's needed now? Or there's a prayer from A Course in Miracles that speaks to this and it says, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say? And to whom? Now I invite you to consider what is a way that you can bring more of this deep listening into the start of the day before you start listening to the other voices in your life. And we're going to take a quick break now. And when we come back, we will finish with the last two ways to bring more divine feminine energy into your business. I'll see you in a moment. As a little girl, I loved playing school, and my favorite part was writing on a chalkboard with a fresh piece of white chalk. Today, my teacher's heart lives on, only now, instead of teaching with chalkboards, I make sure my online programs are stored and shared in the most organized, intuitive way possible. For the past few years, I've used Kajabi for this. It's heads and tails above any other online course platform that I've used since I first started teaching online back in 2008. Not only does Kajabi host all of my online programs, it also hosts all my program web pages and opt-in pages. It even hosts the private student-only podcasts I share inside my programs. Plus, it's easy for me and my team to use, and most importantly, it's easy for my students to use. I love it. If you're looking to up-level, streamline, and beautify things in your own business, whether it's how you deliver your online courses, create web pages, or even host your entire website, I invite you to enjoy a free 30-day trial with Kajabi, which is one of the sponsors for this podcast. You can click the link in the show notes to get started with your free 30-day trial. If you're like me, you'll be so happy you did. The only downside is 
no chalk is involved. All right, so moving on to the fourth way to bring more divine feminine energy into your business. And this is that I prioritize working in rhythms. A lot of women who come to work with me have experienced significant burnout in the past, and I have as well. And they may have even burned down their old businesses because of this. And that's something that I did too. Now they're pivoting or they're starting over with the intention to do so in a more feminine, compassionate, and sustainable way. They want to build a business in a way that will not hurt their health and will allow them to focus on other areas of their lives as well. And again, this is the new way that we're all exploring together how to live, how to really embody that in a practical and effective way. And what I often see in these women, and I'm going to say this, but there's no judgment here at all because I totally get it, is that they have something really important to bring forward and that they feel called to share with the world. But because of the past and what happened in the past, and because they're afraid of repeating the past by burning out again, they hold themselves back and they don't take the actions that they need to, to move forward. So it's kind of like all or nothing. They think that they either need to do it how they used to do it, or they can't do it at all. And this is where we have the lack of role models and really the lack of imagination of how else can we do this? How can we be in community to explore a new way? And whatever this new way is, there are going to be times of hustle. There are going to be times of stress. There are going to be times of sprinting. And we know this. This is true in our personal lives too. Yet, we need to balance those with intervals of rest in the form of breaks during the day, getting adequate sleep at night. We know all this stuff. It's just not as easy to implement. We need periods of active rest through things like meditation, gentle or yin yoga, walks in nature, journaling and longer stretches of time off. As women, we are rhythmic beings through and through. We flow with the lunar cycle, with our menstrual cycles, with different seasons of our womanhood, different seasons of the year. And we need to bring these rhythms into our workdays, into our weeks, our months, seasons, years too, rather than just living and working in the same way every day, no matter what's happening within or around us. And again, it's easier when we do this in community. I think about my mastermind program, Sorcery CEO, and it's just much more enjoyable when we can come together and share our struggles around it or share the ways that are working for us to do this, or we meet for a seasonal retreat and we kind of reflect on the past season and prepare for a new one rather than just trying to figure it out all on our own. So what are some rhythms that you can bring into your days? that you can bring into your weeks, to your month, to this final season of the year? And is there a way that you can weave those rhythms in that you're not just by yourself doing it, but that there's inspiration and support from other women who are on a similar path as you? And the fifth way to bring more of this divine feminine energy into your business is to include all of yourself in the process. You don't just need to sit down and call on your inner selves that are hardworking and just leave the other ones in another room. You don't just need to bring in the ones who are perfectionistic. We want to bring in all of our inner selves so that we're moving, working, leading from a place of wholeness. So this means we don't need to be perfect. It's more important that we are coming from a place of radical inclusivity. So this means slowing down enough to hear what your inner critic is saying, rather than just trying to shut it out, to shut it up, or taking what it's saying at face value, or believing that you and your inner critic are one and the same, that their voice is actually your true voice, because it's not. Instead, hearing what they're afraid of, And how you as the inner leader can support them if you're doing something that feels scary or edgy for them. Because our inner critics will get louder the more that we are moving outside our comfort zones. And also listening to the parts of you who feel afraid. Seeing what they need. Rather than letting them hold you back and keep you kind of paralyzed in the fear. Acknowledging when parts of you are tired or need a break. And the parts of you that are excited to do certain things and ready to charge forward 
then want you to actually sit down and do the work. So widening your view, like opening up space on your lap for all of these little ones inside of you to come and have a seat, to tell you what's going on with them, to hear their concerns, to address those concerns, and to move forward as a united front, like a harmonious inner family. Again, this takes slowing down. It takes listening. It takes compromise. It takes compassion, collaboration, and again, radical inclusivity. Now, are you noticing something? These are all feminine qualities, divine feminine qualities. And aren't these all qualities that we want to experience more in our lives and to bring more fully into the world? But we can see here it starts inside of us. It starts in our individual selves and then bring it into our communities and into our micro businesses. And through that, yes, then we can bring these qualities more fully into the world together. So I invite you to ask yourself, is there a part of you that you don't normally include in your work life? Or maybe that you've actively tried to exclude that you could invite more fully into view? Can you invite that part to take a seat on your lap or across the table from you and to get to know it a bit better? And from there, to see what unfolds, to see what it's like to move forward from your wholeness. Now, let's recap these five ways to bring more of this divine feminine energy into your business, into your workday. Number one, bring some images of the divine feminine into your workspace. Two, bring more beauty into your workspace. Three, pray. Listen deeply to your heart, to your intuition, first and foremost. Number four, embrace rhythms of action, rest, and yes, even play and pleasure. Five, invite all parts of you into your work. Above all, remember your deepest devotion for doing what you're doing. At the core, there is a reverence for something greater. There is a call to deeper service. There is a desire to help inspire a positive change in our world. Feel your devotion to that. Feel your devotion to that more than your fear of burning out or more than your fear of getting it wrong or more than your fear of being judged. And recognize that that devotion is an integral part of the awakening of the divine feminine energy that's happening on our planet and happening inside each of us right now. And if you want more support with exploring how to do this in your own life, in your own business, I have a few spaces open for one-on-one mentoring for this final season of the year. You can learn more at sarahavonstover.com forward slash mentoring. That's sarahavonstover.com forward slash mentoring. And I always love to hear from you. If you want to share with me the ways that you are doing this, and maybe there's others you want to add, Feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'm at Sarah Von Stover. I would love to hear from you. And also if there are other topics that you would love to hear me speak about on this podcast, feel free to share those with me as well. So let's take our next steps in being part of this change, being part of this awakening, being part of this transition team. I'm very grateful to be in it together with all of you. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, change doesn't come from listening alone. I invite you to commit to taking one small or large courageous action after today's conversation. One step you can take if you haven't already is to sign up for my Sunday journal. It's a weekly newsletter filled with inspiration and reflections about the intersection between spiritual entrepreneurship and fulfilling your potential to help you become the woman you truly are in every area of your life. You can subscribe at programs hyphen sarahavonstover.com forward slash journal. And if you found this podcast valuable, please share it with the women in your world. Also, I'd be very grateful if you'd leave a review. It helps others find resources like this. And I'd love to hear what's coming alive for you after listening today. Above all, keep going and never forget the unique offerings you and your true self bring to the world. Until next time, I'm sending you my heartfelt support.